we're gonna we're gonna get going here. Um, our project is titled uh, "Can Organic Agriculture Feed the World?" Hi, uh, as consumers, we often have no idea where our food comes from. But the current industrial farm system, the level of processing involved to bring me my food, is an unnatural product of only the past 50 years. Organic agriculture has been promoted as a sustainable option, but how can organic farming, which is both more expensive and labor intensive, actually feed the world? So, as one of seven, as as one of seven billion people living on this earth, how are we supposed to trust that down the line, future future generations will have enough food? I am a large-scale organic farmer, and I'm trying to bridge the gap. I now have outputs that are 30 to 300 percent better than when I farmed conventionally. Also, I'm consistently getting better soil because I don't put dangerous chemicals into my soil anymore. However, I'm using lots of, of machinery to manage my farm, and I just have to because my farm is big, and I don't have the money for that much labor. I know I can put out the food tonnage that we need to feed the world, but am I sustainable enough when we run short of oil? Almost half the population in hunger live in places that have the largest growth rates. Conventional techniques are able to supply these people with nutritional and plentiful food. Isn't that the priority? Supplying those in need with enough food to feed a seemingly unsustainable population? The question we are faced with is not if organic farming can sustain our planet, but how. Organic small-scale farming is not only capable of feeding our world, but it is without a doubt the best way to do that. Organic farming has the potential to produce a higher yield than our current system without the same damaging effects. By localizing our food system and supporting small-scale agriculture through government and consumer support, I believe that we can achieve food sovereignty for all. Every person on our earth has the right to healthy and culturally appropriate food produced through sustainable methods and the right to define their own food and agriculture systems. With growing rates of diabetes, malnutrition, and cancer, my health is my number one priority. However, I am confused by all the differentiating opinions on what is best. How can I ensure that my children and I have a long and healthy life? If you go ahead and eat the organic food from the supermarket that I produce, you are more likely to live a longer, healthier life because you won't be in contact with anything dangerous anymore. I now have food that is richer in nutritional value, and while it isn't the freshest, it is still the best alternative at this point for the average consumer who is trying to keep a budget but healthy. Malnutrition plagues billions all over the world because they lack, lack access lack access to, not food necessarily, but good nutrition. Biotech has enabled food to provide extra nutrition and be grown easily, especially for dry and nutrient depleted areas. For instance, GMOs have delivered extra vitamin A to those who are deprived of vitamin A and therefore suffer from issues related to eyesight through the growth of a strain of rice known as golden rice. So I guess we, as conventional farmers, are more focused on spreading the health instead of worrying about whether the apples in the store are pesticide or herbicide free. Eating without knowledge of where or how our food is produced just isn't right. While the Surgeon General raises claims over the rising epidemic of obesity, our government is passing farm bills subsidizing corn ensuring that the cheapest calories in the supermarket will continue to be the unhealthiest. One in three children born after the year 2000 will contract type 2 diabetes. As a society, we need to demand wholesome, sustainable, and healthy food for all. For me, food is expensive, and I heard organic is more money if we were to make the transition it would be more money and more land. How am I supposed to pay for it, and how are we all supposed to pay for it? Well, during the changeover period from conventional organic, I did lose a lot of money. And it was a very expensive process. So yes, the change will take a lot of time, a lot of money, and energy. But the benefits will be far-reaching, with better soil and health benefits. We will all save more money down the road, and make more as farmers. In my opinion, can we afford not to change over, despite the initial costs? Luckily for all those who are economically stressed, conventional farming produces more food for less money. Thanks to advanced techniques, we are able to quadruple our original yields from 21 bushels to 91 bushels per area. It makes it easier on the farmer, easier for the distributor, and easier on your wallet in the store. I am a small-scale organic farmer because I seek to better my community. I work deeply and intimately with the, with the land without any chemicals, pesticides, or synthetic fertilizers. I do this not for the money, but because I know the folks who buy my food and the children who eat it. Each day, I try to produce a higher quality product for my customers. My vegetables may be a few cents more expensive, but when environmental and social costs are accounted for, my produce is the cheapest around. I am reading more and more about climate change and the food system contributes to that problem. What role do you play in addressing a stressed environment? I'm, fight I'm fighting climate change by not using the petroleum-based chemicals anymore. 
I'm also fostering the health of our soils and ecosystems by rotating the crops to fix the nitrogen and get back to a more natural cycle of growing and making sure that we can get the most out of our world while at the same time protecting it. I still use some machinery to do my work and to transport it, which gives me some anxiety about what I'm really doing to help the world. The environment, although it is a concern down the line, is not a pressing issue like the rapidly growing population who demands food now. And when the time comes in an area that cannot support agriculture, there are techniques and seeds that are able to provide food, even in the most desperate of areas, like the strain of sugar beet in Brazil that saved millions from the wrath of a fatal drought. We consider ourselves in touch with the environment because we work hard to get as much from it as we can. Our food system is approaching a state of crisis, and we simply cannot continue producing food the way we do now. Hidden from public view, our current food system is leaving lasting environmental, social, and economical effects on generations to come, and is one of the greatest contributors to climate change. The only way to repair this environmental damage is through stewardship of the land. It is time to change the way we think about food and the way we grow it. Article 25, Section 1 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights guarantees everyone a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself and of his family, including food. In the United Nations report submitted by the Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food, Olivier de Shutter, he backs the claim that sustainable agriculture can indeed feed the world. We don't solve hunger and climate change with industrial farming on large plantations. The solution lies in supporting small-scale farmers' knowledge and experimentation and in raising incomes of smallholders so as to contribute to rural development. If the members of the United Nations were to dedicate 2% of their GDP, we could secure social protections for all that include, but are not limited to, unemployment, illness, disability, crop failure, and soaring food prices. However, although this report suggests that organic can feed the world, the idea is a near impossibility. With the growing world population, the need for large-scale conventional farming that can produce tons of food at cheap prices is necessary. Furthermore, with the current problems facing the members of the United Nations in today's day and age, asking for every member nation to dedicate 2% of their GDP is unfeasible. Considering the positions of the previous speakers, is organic a viable option to feed the world? This leads us to question our agricultural future. How do we feed the world? Our food system needs to change. But how much does it need to change? At what cost? And how do we change it? So, question time. You all have any questions? Uh, we'll be happy to answer them. Anyone? <laughs>
deciding that we want something different, that we as a people want to not be tied to the system that we are currently in. No, I'm sorry. Sure? No. I was going to clap. <laughs>